Welcome to this episode of Mission Business, a podcast about good business for those in the business of good, presented by your part-time controller, LLC, also known as YPTC. My name is Jennifer Oliva, the host of Mission Business and managing partner at YPTC. In this episode, we are taking on a different subject, though no less important. I will be speaking with YPTC's own Geraldine Dressler, Director of Strategic Partnerships, who co-produces this podcast and hosts our Ask the Controller segment. She recently wrote an article that was published with the National Council of Nonprofits called A Storm is Brewing, The Accountant Shortage is Already Affecting Nonprofits. We wanted to dig into this topic more because it is already affecting the nonprofit sector and we have some advice on how nonprofits can weather the storm. A quick note before we begin. In this episode, we reference accountants and auditors, and we wanted to clarify the difference between the two roles. At YPTC, we serve as accountants. Accountants are responsible for an organization's day-to-day accounting transactions and preparing the financial statements, whereas auditors verify the accuracy of the financial statements to ensure compliance with generally accepted accounting standards. Accountants can be part of an organization's staff or external consultants like YPTC works with our nonprofit clients whereas auditors can only be external. Accounting happens year round, whereas auditing typically happens once per year. Today we have Gerilyn Dressler. We are so happy you're here today. Thanks for having me. Very important topic that we're gonna cover today, the accountant shortage in the nonprofit sector. Something we know a little bit about. Exactly. So um, you're getting a lot of traction on an article you just wrote uh, for the National Council of Nonprofits titled, A Storm is Brewing, The Accountant Shortage is Already Affecting Nonprofits. What's happening? Yeah, that is exactly what is happening. And we know this is happening because we have some data from the American Institute of CPAs, the AICPA. We love data. Um, and <laughs> We love data. And that's exactly what I'm starting <laughs> with here. And One of their uh, publications had a really staggering statistic, which was that 75% of CPAs met retirement age in 2020. And they did not exactly state what retirement age was, but I think we can figure in the 60 to 65 years old. The baby boomers, baby boomers. Yeah, Um, that's exactly it. There are a lot of accountants uh, in that range. (laughs) Yeah. And at, in the time that they were coming of age, going into a career in accounting was very mm-hmm. popular and attractive. And the other piece of what's happening now is that there are a lot of students who are not taking that same approach. There are fewer students that are completing a bachelor's or a master's degree in accounting. And I'll give you some numbers here real quick. In 2015, 80,000 students graduated each year with those degrees. And that was down to 73,000 in 2020. And then for those that went on to complete the actual CPA licensure and the exam, there's been a 33% decline between 2016 and 2021. So from a data perspective, we know what's happening, but we also have some other factors that we know. It's definitely a brewing storm uh, for all sectors, including our nonprofit sector. But what got us to the point that no one wants to go into accounting now? Not um, no one, though. Well, I, should, one, I should say not, not no one. There's a not lot of no people one. going into accounting, but there's a lot of <laughs> it's not as attractive as it used to be. Yeah. And you'll hear a lot of people talk about the 150 credit hour requirement. So back in 20, 2005, all of the states adopted this standardized requirement to be able to become a certified public accountant. And what that translates to is basically an extra year of school. And as we know how expensive a college education has become, when you add another year onto that, it makes it even more difficult. And for a lot of people, they would get that either by just staying and, you know, having figuring out how to pay for that, taking out loans, et cetera. A lot of people were trying to manage that by working at the same time. And I can tell you from experience, and I'm sure you have a similar one, studying for the CPA exam and working at the same time is very, very difficult, especially because going into the CPA profession, you know how hard the work is and how long the work is. And that's another barrier, I think, for a lot of students when they're making choices these days. They see the the long work weeks, the busy season hours, et cetera. And it's not necessarily attractive to go and do that kind of work when they do have other options. 
I was just going to say, you don't have to be a CPA necessarily to be an accountant and in the accounting profession. So there's other reason that people are not showing up for the profession. That's right. In fact, there was a really uh, prominent Wall Street Journal article back in December of 20, 2022 that had some additional data, because we <laughs> love data. And I'm going to quote here, more than 300,000 U.S. accountants and auditors have left their jobs in the past two years, a 17% decline. And the dwindling number of college students coming into the field can't fill the gap. And the article goes on to talk about recruiters who have been luring away experienced accountants into new roles, often in other finance and technology roles. Um, And that's really true because accountants have such a versatile skill set and the experience that they get in those entry level jobs really translates to so many different types of positions in really any kind of industry. Um, And then, of course, you know, the not cool factor, the bad rap. And, you know, as well as I do that, it's not true. (laughs) And I have to say accounting is awesome. I love accounting. I want to draw more and more people into it. And the reason it is so great is that you get to see all aspects of business. If you're in a nonprofit, you get to see all aspects of the business of the nonprofit and get to work with a a mission based organization, which is and we'll get to a little bit more of that later. But typically as an accountant, you get to 